after police stormed the restaurant where the hostage standoff took place. Kelly Kerrigan was there when reports on the ordeal that paralyzed the city of Ferndale. It wasn't supposed to happen in Ferndale, but it did. And by the time the two-hour hostage holding was over, three people were injured, one critically. Leone Gates was washing dishes when a customer in the Rialto Cafe, identified as Alvin Freeman, grabbed a waitress by the throat. Vince Mullen didn't move fast enough. He took a bullet, but only in the pants leg. I heard people moving behind me for the door. Apparently he panicked, and uh, pointed the gun down and shot, and here's the result of that. Police heard it rush our commuters safely away from the shots that came from the inside of the cafe, but two on the outside were injured. At 7 o'clock, a police sniper had worked his way through the cafe back door, and it was time to move. Four shots were fired into Freeman as waitress Karen Taylor, first grabbed by the man, was brought out. The crowd was relieved, no more so than those whose relatives had lived those two hours. Kelly Kerrigan, Eyewitness News, Late Edition. Tonight, the hostages from that savage standoff bear the physical and mental scars of the attack. Giuseppe Rialto, her throat cut, gunshot wounds to the leg, and reportedly sexually assaulted. She's in critical condition at this hour. Two others seriously hurt include a Ferndale police officer and a 65-year-old man who is fighting for his life at this hour. Both were also shot. Why it all happened tonight is still a mystery. Our Murray Feldman shed some light on who Alvin Freeman was. A lot of people, George, remember Al Freeman, the man who ran this party store at Aiton Woodward with his wife. Customers say he hasn't been the same since he was shot in the head over a year ago during a family dispute. Tonight, his wife Maddie was comforted by neighbors after being told of what happened. One neighbor said to me, she's taking it very hard. This man may have been one of the last to hear from Alvin Freeman. He says Freeman called his house just hours before the deadly rampage. He said that uh, they found me guilty. We didn't know really anything about it. And uh, I won't be in the store anymore. And everybody wants this store. He said, I don't know why they want it, but everybody wants it. And uh, I won't be there any longer. Tonight, police won't shed any light on that, but they say they've had dealings with Mr. Freeman in the past. They took Maddie Freeman to their headquarters shortly after 10 o'clock tonight, hoping she might be able to help sort out some of the events which led to all of this. Neighbors say Alvin Freeman seemed nervous at times, but was generally nice and quiet, especially to neighborhood kids. So why did it happen? Tonight, nobody can say with certainty. In Ferndale, Murray Feldman, Channel 2, Eyewitness News, Late Edition. Well, that mayhem was underway in Ferndale, so whatever did set him off, maybe it was from back a few years ago when he got shot. He was a very nice guy. You know, he was a low key guy. And uh, whenever I ran low on liquor or something like that, I'd go around the street and get a couple of bottles. And, you know, I talked to him and his wife. And uh, they were really nice people. They had a couple of kids. Low key and nice people. That's what we hear from the folks who knew them, their neighbors, their customers. Unfortunately, sometime today, right around 5 o'clock, this man, Alvin Friedman, had some difficulty with a police officer. There was some discussion back and forth that there may have been a robbery attempt, but we can't confirm that with police right now because we haven't talked to them. In the meantime, there was some shooting. There was a lot of difficulty. They tried to talk about it. It didn't work. He is now dead. As we said, police are still inside, going over and over and over all the bits and pieces to make sure that they did the right thing. They are sure at this hour that they did. This is Bill Proctor reporting live from front of Bill? Okay, Bill, it sounds like just a, kind of an average businessman who had suffered a very serious wound for whatever reason snapped this afternoon. He ran that, uh, that eight mile in wood liquor store for quite some time, and he was robbed, he was shot, he was shot in the head. And it's kind of in the last, uh, all the last two months to try to convince him to go back into a mental institution to get treatment because he was having trouble due to that head wound. Okay, Bill Proctor, thank you very much. Uh, more information for you now. Two of the shooting victims are reported to be in critical condition at Beaumont Hospital, Woodward Avenue, in Royal Oak. 25-year-old Karen Taylor, who was held hostage, suffered a gunshot wound to the head and to the leg. 65-year-old Jack Bilski was shot in the leg and wrist. 51-year-old Dan Bolin, the off-duty police officer who was shot in the chest and wrist, is reported to be in fair condition. Police are planning to remain at the scene of the shootout for most of this evening, trying to get all the information that they can in this uh, very sad and very brutal and very terrifying kind of case and story.
Tiny intersection of Woodward and Nine Mile Road earlier this evening was the scene of a standoff between police and a hostage-holding gunman. Just a short time ago, medical examiners removed the body of the gunman from the Rialto Cafe some four hours after police marksmen opened fire on the man in the siege. News force Deborah Silverstein was at the scene during the standoff right up to its violent conclusion. high-powered rifle shot ended the three-hour-long standoff tonight. The violence began just after 4.30 when one of the customers, according to one witness, went wild. He just went bizarre, went up and grabbed the, uh, the girl and started shooting. Off-duty police officer Detective Dan Bolin was shot twice. A customer, Jack Belusky, shot once. We started dragging the older fellow out the door. As, as there were two people dragging him out and they helped him drag the older fellow out the door. That's all I saw that was in there. The gunman held one waitress, Karen Taylor, hostage. And as police surrounded the area, people who know Karen Taylor feared for her life. Finally, the police moved in. Some spectators hit the dirt, and then they all started applauding. Karen Taylor was taken away in an ambulance. The gunman was killed. We had information from an officer who had secured himself inside to the rear door that he had shot uh, the victim inside. We knew that she'd been shot in the leg. The gunman is believed to be Alden Freeman, who lived near the Rialto Cafe and owned a dirty store on 8 Mile. Neighbors said he'd been shot before. Well, uh, he was shot a couple of years ago in the head by an attempted robbery at his other store over in Island Park. And, uh, unless that set him off, I don't know. What we're he always gives you a hard time when you're in your store and everything. And it's it's kind of spacey and it goes off every once in a while. Tonight, Freeman's wife, Maddie, stayed with friends. She didn't want to talk and instead hurried off to the police station. On Woodward, police took down the barricades and labeled the Rialto Cafe once again a crime scene. The Rialto Cafe has been hit by tragedy before. Several years ago, a car went through the plate glass window. One person was killed. Now, after today's incident, one of the employees of the Rialto Cafe asked what could happen next. Deborah Silverstein.